the following morning, Ooh. we still wouldn't be able to fly the balloons. The decision was made to pack up and head to our last launch site, Karkorin in central Mongolia. The six-hour drive saw us leaving the barren landscape of the Gobi to the lush grasslands of Mongolia. This and the Sea of Rolling Green is what most travelers come to Mongolia for. Mongolia has one of the last truly nomadic cultures in the world. These nomads and their herd animals move several times a year in search of the best grazing land. With Mongolia's harsh winters, it is not an easy way to make a living. But for now, with the sun and blue sky over us and these friendly nomad kids coming to greet us, it seems like a slice of heaven. When this little girl saw I was interested in horses, she offered to lend me hers to ride. Out here on the breathtaking grasslands, on a sturdy Mongolian horse with my newfound friends, this was the Mongolia that existed in my dreams. I've found new friends here. Uh, it's a lot of fun riding with them. We can't communicate too much, but just the smile alone makes me feel that uh, we understand each other. Nearby was the family's herd of yaks. I want to run and grab that baby yak. I think I can handle that one. But the mother is there. She's trying to grab the other yak for me to ride. She's good. The yak um, is special because of the milk that they produce. Uh, they have excellent uh, milk, and of course, they use the fur as well. Uh, sometimes they intermix or interbreed with cows, and they have some of them over here. But basically, uh, the yak lives in the mountains and very sturdy in the mountains. arrived in Karkorin. Ishka and Sugi wanted to take me to a special dinner. So what's my surprise? Well, this one is the one of the favorite dishes of Mongolians, yeah. especially Sugi likes it. You like that, Sugi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You want to see it? I want to see it now. Okay. What is this? Uh-oh, what is this? Boiled sheep head <laughs> is a meal reserved for special occasions. It is the equivalent of turkey dinner for Americans and lechon for Filipinos. Mongolians are great meat eaters. Nomadic herders rely on meat as their primary food source not just because it is tasty, but because it was a necessity in order for them to survive the harsh winters. This is the meat. Actually good. Nothing is wasted in Mongolian cooking. Every part of the animal is consumed with great relish. So this is the tongue. Yes, I delicious. have to try? But okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's not so bad. Eyeballs. Eyeballs oh yeah. my god. Oh, so this is the eye. Eye itself, it comes out from here. Yeah. yeah. And okay. here we go. Good, good, good. Good, good. Good. Bad. <laughs> good is not right to word. Delicious. Wow. Wonderful. Delicious. Yes. Yeah. After the memorable meal, I had a chance to watch traditional Mongolian throat singing at its best.
Karkorin is a small industrial town with a population of about 9,000 people. The reason people come here, though, is for this. A few kilometers from Karkorin is the ruins of Karakorum, Established as a supply base in the mid-13th century by Genghis Khan, it was later made into the capital of the empire by his son, Ogede. At its height, Karkorum attracted traders, dignitaries, and skilled workers from all corners of the empire. After only 40 years as a major center for world politics, Kublai Khan moved the capital to Kanbalik later called Beijing. With the move to Beijing and the collapse of the Mongol Empire, Karakorum was abandoned and then destroyed by Manchurian soldiers in 1388. On the site of the ruins, the Erdensu Monastery was built in the 16th century. Today, we would be making history by being the first to launch balloons from the site of the ancient capital. It's the first time a truck will come in. This is a smaller truck, so it's fine. But the second truck won't fit, so we'll have to find a solution how to bring in the balloons into this uh, monastery. We would be flying with Ali. She is an expert pilot with close to 2,000 flying hours under her belt. She is currently on the way to breaking the world record for balloon flights in the most countries by a woman pilot. She has flown in 60 countries. Her husband, Phil, holds the men's world record at 110 countries. everybody's help becomes a little bit easier. Basan Suren, the head monk of the monastery, would also be making his first balloon flight with us. Taking off very shortly. in the air. Wind is taking us to where we want to go. The conditions were perfect. Clear blue skies, hardly any wind, and the rolling plains of central Mongolia beneath us. We're going to try and fly over the houses and uh, just say hello to everybody. Is we don't know how to say hello in Mongolian. Oh, it's a Sambanu. Sambanu. The others have landed. Um, we still have the power line over there. I think we'll just go beyond it, and that would be uh, very safe. Our chase crew is there. I can see them. In fact, it's not only the chase crew, but it's the whole town, I think. Seems like the entire town came out to greet us as we landed. Watching the smiles on everyone's faces is one of the most fulfilling things about flying balloons. It just never gets old. Even the babies come over just to meet us. <laughs> so what did you think of the flight? Yeah, it was wonderful. Yeah, it was very nice. Well, that's our historic flight over Karakoram. And uh, what a good landing spot. We have the view of the town, and I can still see the temple from here. The world we live in today is getting smaller and smaller. We are updated about the comings and goings of people, the company they keep, and even what they had for dinner. Out of reach seems no longer an option. Mongolia is one of the few places left where you can truly fall off the map. This was 
the only time in recent memory where having no cell phone or internet felt like a good thing. And while the endless blue skies, the vastness of the steps and the Gobi did not disappoint, it was the unconditional hospitality of the people that left an indelible impression. I could get used to simple living. All I need is a horse to ride and the promise of adventure waiting just over the horizon. This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in our next Asian Air Safari.